jab, uppercut, leave you laid out on the floor, try to duck and roll, hit and miss, now you kinda star, shoulda practiced more, shoulda hit the mask, get out that more, plan that you're the best. You gotta show me son, actions over words, baby boy, is you real or what? Talking way too much, where I'll come back sports, talking way too much, where I'll come back sports, talking way too much, where I'll come back sports, sports, sports. And game A side, A side, A side, A side official, no negotiation needed. Period. You already know the first in the building, D Low Boxing is on deck. You already know, man. Salute to you. Appreciate you pulling up, man. Thanks for supporting the channel and everybody else that's headed this way. Do what you do best if you support the channel. That's all I got to say. I'm not going to sit up here and tell grown adults what to do, what to push. <clears throat> I'm not going to do it, bro. Y'all grown adults, man. If, if you support the channel, you support the channel. That's all I can say, bro. If you choose to donate to the channel, then you can do that too. You know what I'm saying? It's totally up to you. You know what I'm saying? It's your independence. It's your independence at the end of the day. You feel me? So, let's get down to the nitty gritty up jumps to the topic is of course is what's all over the media you know what I'm saying the temperature of the media has been hot ever since this past Saturday because once again Terrence Crawford name is the hottest topic in social media this all evolves around him you know, there's many people out there that tell you that's not true. You know what I'm saying? It, it has to do with fanboyism and stuff like that. <clears throat> I will explain to you all again when it, when it, when it, when it dials itself all the way to the center is that a true boxing fan is a fan of the sport and the fighter. They wouldn't go through the extreme measures to support a fighter if they weren't a fan of the fighter. Now, how much you choose... To speak on that fighter is absolutely up to you. But moving forward, let's get on the task at hand. All right? The task at hand is this. Tim Zhu had a fight. MMA uh, on deck was good. Bruce Gass Boxing Jazz OG on deck. Salute to you, brother. Now, what we do know is Tim Zhu had a hell of a fight. And he showed his warrior spirit. But the but the gripe are the gripe is whether his corner should have allowed him to show his warrior spirit and just return to fight another day. The reason is this makes common sense. Very, very much is 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 I wanna say common, it's logical for people to think this way. Because Tim Zhu took a fight on short notice against a fighter who was quite opposite, the very opposite of a Keith Thurman. Keith Thurman falls apart, and here comes, you know, Sebastian Fondora. Boxing somewhat had lined Fondora up when he was the mandatory anyway, and then he ended up getting knocked out. So from Fondora, he has people that's looking out for him because he showed that he's willing to fight whoever they fight and put in front of him, supposedly. And he did that. But Brian Mendoza had his way, and you saw the results. Brian Mendoza gets the shot at Tim Zhu. He loses a decision. Fondora goes in there, and a cut happens. And now the buzz is Tim Zhu's corner should have stopped the fight. If Tim Zhu wouldn't have had that cut, then the fight would have played out a bit differently. So much to the fact that people were insinuating that Tim Zhu possibly could have beat Fondora a bit more convincingly if he didn't have blood in his eye. A part of me say, well, it is some truth to that. And then a part of me is, you have a team, you have a corner over there. 
you had individuals that was, I mean, you know, giving you advice all the way up to the point where you've been defending these titles. They've been there. You trust them. You've been defending these titles. You trust them. But the doctor, the doctor is who you really should be, you know, throwing elbows at. Because the doctor absolutely seen how bad that cut was early in the fight. And he could have stopped that way before the fourth round. It's only three minutes in between rounds now. And you have a minute in between to assess a situation such as a cut that's impairing the vision of Tim Zhu that night. And the doctor didn't do it. So the second option is for the corner to stop the fight themselves. This way it gets interesting for me when you talk about warrior spirit and fight fans want to see the warrior. Sometimes the call of a warrior, they have good intentions but bad judgment, y'all. I'm going to say it again. They have good intentions, bad judgment. That's the warrior spirit sometimes. Perfect example. Deontay Wilder. Deontay Wilder, he called upon the white warrior spirit. He wanted to stay in there in the rematch in February 2020 and go out on the shield. He wanted to do that. But his corner threw in the towel. This is one of those situations where Tim Zhu had a cut. And, you know, he could have lived to fight another day. It was just a cut. But definitely it was going to impair his vision in a 12-round fight for a unification. That's how important this fight was. So don't you want to optimize your fighter's um, chances of, of winning the fight? Yes. Is it a legitimate cut? Yes. But why the one to go out on the shield? When Tim Zhu was asked, could he see, you know, the doctor asked him a question, he, he said yes, and he didn't, he didn't say no. That means he was, he was willing to put it all, leave it all in the ring, man. You know what I'm saying? The warrior spirit. Tim Zhu, he, he, he did fight like a warrior. Tim Zhu is no chomping him. He tried his best to end it all because they actually thought that they can come back and knock, knock um, Fondora out even with the cut being the way it is. But sometimes the warrior spirit gets you in trouble. It does, man. Sometimes the warrior spirit puts you in a fickle, for real. They're going to have to figure it out. It is causing um, a bit of chaos and confusion because Samson Likowitz has been on record and I love a part of it and the other part I don't. The part I do love is the fact that there was a group of individuals up here cheering and really boasting, you know what I'm saying? Just just going around playing patty cake, patty cake, baker's mind. Clapping their hands back and forth, hopping around here and shit. All because if it, you know they felt that Spence came in and jumped the line on Crawford. All right. Then the plan went out the window because for Team for Team Zoo, who kept their fighter in there, believing that he can end the show sooner or later, you know, because he's a warrior, he ended up losing because Team Zoo. So 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 once again impulsively, you know when you when you when you um try these battle tactics impulsively, sometimes you do get a surprise. It it, it's, it don't necessarily be on the battlefield. It's prior to, you know what I'm saying. And in this case, Spence jumped in the ring and made a fool of himself because he was told to do that. And you know he he putting up a ticket like he betted on Fundor. Okay. Fondora wasn't the one slated to win, but he did. So their team has a different route they want to take. Fondora's team want to fight a rematch with Tim Zhu. 
me, I want to just spray some freaking full nine on that whole fight right there. Wipe away the cut. And then say, okay, what if the fight went a little bit different with no blood? What if they would have went the distance with no blood and Fandora, he won? Would Samson be up here trying to get a rematch with Zoo? See, you know how they have that saying, um, somebody see blood? You know what I'm saying? When somebody see blood, this is a perfect example of that. Samson looked at a fight and saw blood. The rematch is not going to be the same way the first fight was. You know what I'm saying? Blood did, did something that he was talking back and forth, jumping up and down like he's trying to, to um, launch Fundora to, to the constellation of boxing and, 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 to the, and to the Milky Way off one fight. You know what I'm saying? That's what he's trying to do. They're unified champion and they're so hyped up that they're not even processing about building a legacy. They just up here trying to say, oh, we're looking for a payday. Yes, he's looking for a payday. The same person that was up there criticizing Crawford for looking for a payday, he's looking for a payday, y'all. And this is why I say that. Because he's talking about they can sell out 90000 at and AT&T. What is that consistent of? You want to sell it out just for, um, you know, YouTube likes, views, subscribers, IG followers? <clears throat> no, you want to talk about selling that out for money. You want to try to convince people that Zoo and 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 Fundora can can do ninety thousand. That's what you're saying. You're saying Zoo and Fundora can do ninety thousand. Is that what Samson's talking about? These fighters have no recollection of numbers outside. Zoo don't have none outside Australia that's anything to brag about. Especially Fondor just getting off the canvas, right? Now all of a sudden they can do 90,000, y'all. It seems like a person is up here barking for a payday. He's trying to... There's people that all of a sudden they have a bloody fight and... He, he, he did what he had to do. He showed, he showed tenacity and everything, but he came up short. So I want to give him a rematch because everybody was oohing and on how bloody it was and all that. So we want to bring them back. So what does that do for Spence? It, it puts him where he, he, he was all alone. It gives him more time to be out the ring to fix, you know, so for, from what we hear, you know, the trainer's all fucked up. I don't know what training he's in. So, so that's why my thumbnail is the way it is. Now we get to the point on how Spence fits into this entire equation. He jumped in the ring to fight Fondora, and they have other plans. Zoo didn't win. Maybe, it, it, you know, listen to Jennings and the way he was talking. Yes, Errol Spence will be locked in right now, and the Errol sexuals will be up here jumping, jumping up and down, you know, having a good old time at the bar, you know, getting, getting their head right, celebrating. You know, prematurely, that Spence is locked in for the title, title shot. But that's not the case right now. You know, you know what I'm saying? That's not the case. So moving away from that, because we're going to get back to it, that kind of shook everything up because I guess Team Spence was betting on Zoo to win. Because Jenny was on board, but it didn't happen. All because, you know, or whatever. It's, it's like stupidity on both of the um, sides. From, from the voice of Zoo's corner... You know, and, and Jennings talking that crazy shit, and then Sampson coming here talking extra crispy. So now you have Errol Spence that's, that's really SOL, if anybody remember what that means. He's SOL right now. The reason why is that once again, they went on this parade of trying to shit on Bud Crawford. So the question is, does he really owe Derrick James money? Or are they good to go? Does he owe Derrick James money? Or are they good to go? Some people want to say, oh, they still good. You know, they still good. 
just publicity. And then others are asking who's going to be Spence's next trainer. This way it gets very, very intriguing, y'all. Because Spence was trying to come back and fight. His direction, his targets, his targets, right, was from Dora, who's not going to be back to November. Let's do the math. August, September, October, November. That's, that's 16 right there. That's 16. It might be a little less than 16. That's about 16. That's, that's if he comes back to fight in November. They say he'll be back in November. So that's 16 months Spencer will be out the ring. During that time that he squandered, it's already January, February, March, April. If Fondora is going to be back, you got to look at May, June, July, August, September, October, November. That's seven months for Spence to get with somebody to train for whoever he's fighting. Seven months. That's seven months that he has to try to improve Whatever needs to be improved about his skill set. At this point, either he's going to be stubborn or he's going to be open-minded. The way I look at this, I don't know who he's fighting. He's made it perfectly clear that Crawford ain't it. A lot of people up here, they was jumping up and down, cheering that, you know, he had jumped in line with Crawford. But they don't want him to fight Crawford. You, you, ever, you ever seen such retardation? They, 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 they happy that Spence jumped the line in front of Crawford, but now the shit has blown up in their face. They're not pushing for Spence to fight Crawford if the, if the WBO is vacated. They're not pushing for Spence to fight Crawford. Have you ever seen a, such a cheerleaders that don't know what to do with their pom-poms at the right given time? This is a perfect example, y'all. This is a perfect example. These fans don't know what they want. How can we just be removed from one of the, the best fights when it comes to the opponents last year? But in 2024, they want to act like it's a demarcation shield that was up. We dealing with some Jurassic shit, Jurassic Park shit where they putting up force fields. They, they, they acting like our thoughts don't transfer over to 2024 and like we forgot what happened last year. We forgot how people was pushing for a rematch for Spence right after that on the 30th. They was on here pushing, 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 y'all. I want a rematch. Spence deserves a rematch. Spence deserves a rematch. He was weight drain, weight drain, weight drain. Rematch, weight drain, rematch, weight drain, weight drain, weight drain. He was rematch. And you know who they blamed it on? Uh, his opponent that was, that was freaking fighting in the same division who was supposed to be the smaller fighter. They're up there trying to play some blame on him. You can't put no blame on anybody. Both fighters accepted. They made weight, right? Spence team decided to run up mountains close to the fight day. They made But the excuses on top of excuses. They wanted to see the fight at 154, y'all. Tell me I'm lying. Tell me these arrow, these arrow fanatics. Tell me. They didn't want, tell me you never heard them say they didn't want to fight at 154. They did. They must want to fight immediately. Look, they was unwilling to give Bud his full credit because they say Errol Spence Jr. was weight drained. They say Bud had, had, had cheated. He had shit in his gloves. You know what I'm saying? Derrick James, a person that was, that was responsible for coming up with the game plan. He want to molest the gloves of Crawford and see can he feel any foreign objects. You know what I'm saying? 
He wanted the, he wanted to find a way out of this nightmare he was in, y'all. Diddy James felt the tip of Crawford's glove to see if he could redeem himself to the public eye and say, yeah, I know it's all right. I know I knew it was right there. I, I, I grabbed his glove, just like Billy Collins, just like see, uh, Collins singing did. Yeah, I grabbed his glove, and I said, damn, it ain't hard, no padding in there. I felt some hard in there. I felt that. And then when they took the gloves off, found out the glove was just okay. It was just that big-ass motherfucking paw he had up in there. You know what I'm saying? That mullet. He had two Omaha mullets in there. I felt so embarrassed. I thought I had him, y'all. I thought I had him. I, I, yeah, yeah, I thought I had him. I thought I had him. I hate him. I hate him. I thought I had him. He was up here thinking that if he can check the gloves for a foreign object to be somewhere in his imagination. Because he ain't never seen nobody beat his fighter like that before. Why? Because they had gotten away with it for so long. So they say, hey, it ain't nothing we need to change drastically. We just keep on doing what we're doing. You got the heart. You got the determination. You got the, you got the engine. We're going to go ahead and try our hand. You know what I'm saying? And then if it get rough for you, I want you to throw away the oars. And I just want goddamn you to use your hand and paddle upstream and get the way you need to be. That's, what, that's how sometimes you don't need no oars. You know what I'm saying? You change direct. You're going upstream. You need to get there the best way possible. You need to show them that you're a motherfucking warrior. And when he started to try to paddle upstream, y'all, it, it wasn't the fact that he wasn't making no progress. It's the fact that he kept going underwater. And then when he came on surface, he heard Harvey Doc counting. That was the problem. Using them with just a better fighter. But being that you was with a trainer... For several years, over a decade, right? Are you willing to listen to the instructions of another trainer? Let's listen to what the Boxing Voice had to say. Shout out to the Boxing Voice. This is for instruction purpose use only. Shout out to the Boxing Voice who had Robert Garcia on and he made this point. And shout out to Nesta Gibbs. You know what I'm saying? For another one. Let's listen to what when it comes to another trainer and and Ness, and, 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 and Nessa get asking Robert Garcia, who's a renowned trainer. You know what I'm saying? Everybody knows who he is. I think when he trained Anthony Joshua, Joshua looked way better than he did before. So he had some good words to say that Robert Garcia. He did, man. He had some good words to say. Let's listen in. Tip Bellis says, would you consider training the big fish, Earl Spence, after the rumors that he's parting with Derek James? Earl Spence is a great fighter, great athlete, uh, also a, a, a really good person. I, I, you know, I went up against him with Mikey. He was always very respectful, always showed us nothing but love. Uh, I wouldn't mind, you know, giving it a try, you know, especially bringing him back after that performance that he had you know against uh, Crawford uh you know I guess uh, you know it's up you know I've never heard it this is the first time I hear something like that but uh it would be pretty interesting you know it would be a challenge for me too you know I've had those challenges before with Admiral Mahdis who very few thought he had it in him again and I and I brought him to become world champion same thing with Marcus Maidana where he was planning on retiring and and then he became champion and had the best years of his career so I, you know, it would be a great challenge for me, and uh, it would be very interesting. I would love to. Why not? I like it. Look, I like the words he was talking about. I, I would want to see if Spence is willing to go under the um, the tutelage of Robert Garcia. Is he willing to learn? Because, look, people like to see Arrow come in there with changes from a, a, a well-qualified coach. The, like Robert Garcia, former boxer himself. I would like to see if he could put the touches on Spence to, to change it up, being that he's just been the same way for so freaking long. And, and, and he doesn't have time to waste. He needs to be in the fight camp for whoever he's fighting. You know what I'm saying? He needs to go in there and just start going to school and being the student. 
is Errol Spence able to be the student right now? You know what I'm saying? I don't think when, when Diddy James is training Errol, I don't think he's a student anymore. I don't think he's been a student for quite some time. I think he's been another member of the World Class Furniture Store, and um, he's there to go through drills. I don't think he's a student. We're, 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 we're Robert Garcia, I believe that he would have no other choice but to be a student, and he will have to learn. I want to see what he's doing. I like what he did with Joshua. I don't know why Joshua left Robert Garcia. Probably because he had to work his ass off or something. I don't know. But I like how Anthony Joshua looked when he came and fought Usyk from being with Robert Garcia. I like that head movement. I like how he was putting his combinations for real. I, I like that. And, and I do believe um, Robert Garcia can make some 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 very pertinent changes to, to Spence, man. Seriously. I think he can do a very good job with Spence, but yet Spence will have to allow him to make those changes. He will have to know that it's certain things that he get away with over there in Texas, he's not going to get away with over there in the gym with Robert Garcia. I'm just saying, he's not going to be able to do it. If he's willing to be the student, I think this will be a good, good change up for him, man. Real talk, I think it'll be a good environment, a good look. You know, um, somewhat of a fresh start to get get a different face. Spence has to want to do it, man. Um, a part of me, you know, say he's very stubborn. He, he he does things, whatever, how he does it. Is he willing to change it up? If Spence ain't willing to change up, all he's doing is just buying his time for a couple more fights until he get out the ring, man. You think his style suits you as well as a trainer? Because I always can. Check this out, y'all. I think Robert Garcia would be a good change-up for Errol Spence Jr. But to be honest with y'all, right, I think Spence needs to be able to allow himself to assume the position of a student, to, ass to assume the role of a student. If he can allow himself that, then I believe whatever Robert Garcia is going to teach this man, it may, it may have some type of productivity to it. To the point where people be able to clearly see that he's been training with Robert Garcia and his style has switched up a little bit. Not drastically, but just the decisions that he's making in there moving forward in his career. I think it's a good move, to be honest. But Spence will have to allow himself, for one, to be taught. And two, to allow Robert Garcia to teach. You know what I'm saying? He's going to have to allow himself to be taught and Garcia will, um, to, to be able to teach him. And I believe he can do a damn good job. Like this morning, I mentioned you as a possible consideration because of that, because you kind of teach that Mexican style and, and he's kind of fights in that manner, just more paced. I don't know if you agree. So what's the Mexican style? Uh, letting them hands go, coming forward. You know, uh, putting pressure on your opponent. Motherfucker, when did you see Mikey fight like that? Well, I mean, <laughs> not Mikey, but Ramirez, uh, Virgil. Okay, well, well you, know, uh, you, you, know, you got a lot of fighters. I know what you mean, that... I know what you mean but yeah, you know, one thing, you know, look, bro, I'm, I'm not trying to give a hard time, but what, what, uh, what, 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 what he will get in my gym is fucking tough ass work, and 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 his mentality will change because I like that. He said what he I like that. He said what he get in my gym is tough ass work. You know what I'm saying? He was gonna say tough ass sparring, you know what I'm saying, and training. I believe it. I believe it. You know what I'm saying? I believe it, bro. I believe that would be a good fit. I wouldn't want him going up there to run his shields just because he's local. But in order for him to go on a run, in my opinion, if his body is allowable, you know what I'm saying? If his, if his body is is still strong enough for him to um, go into a, you know, a boot camp, so to speak, to learn new things with Robert Garcia, um, it's going to hurt. But he's, he's an elite fighter. You know what I'm saying? He can take... He can take orders and direction if he allows himself to so um i'm curious to know if you know spence would even i i, I don't know man i think 
you know, a bit part of him being obstinate and just being foolish and to Robert Gardner himself to be spoken to and, and, and ordered allow himself to, to do certain things that he wasn't doing over there at the world class furniture store he's going to have to know that is Spence open minded enough to allow this process to work that is the biggest question to me is he able to allow this process to work to change it up so potentially down the road, he may have confidence. His people may have confidence to step back in there with Crawford before he retires. I want to see it because I, man, I, I know, I know if, if Robert Garcia puts his touches on Spence, only if Spence allow and 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 and, and is receptive to what he's about to be taught. I believe he can make some changes over there. You know, you hear about the problems that's going on with um, with Diddy James, but you don't hear these cats up here suggesting who he should um, train with. It's just not as easy to say, oh, man, he need to go to another black trainer. That ain't always the case. He's been with one for a long-ass time. Switch it up and go somewhere that's different, a bit more strenuous. You know what I'm saying? The environment is definitely going to have you outside your comfort zone and that's what spence need because uh, that's what my fighters get it's not about the box the mexican style no need to didn't have mexican style fucking you know because brandon rios and marcus maidana were like that that doesn't mean all my fighters fight like that but uh, but, uh yeah of course margarito but you know margarito came to me like already with that style you know what i mean anyways that's 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 you know that's just something that's a different argument uh, I think I think what what uh, whatever would get in my gym would be fucking great great ass training, good fucking sparring, and he would have that mentality of a fucking winner because that's what my fighters get in in my gym. They ne they don't want to be less than the other one because you know you're never gonna be the best in my gym because there's always somebody better than you. I like that mentality, man. I like that mentality. He said no one's going to be the best in his gym. You know what I'm saying? Because he's training them to be winners. I like that mentality, man. Real talk. I like that mentality. Even though I had to wait an hour to get an interview there, Robert Garcia, when I caught you coming into the, to, to, you know, to the hotel in New York, you know, Robert wasn't trying to do no, no interviews, but you know what I'm saying? He gave me one anyway. And then me and him end up, you know, being locked out the the main arena in Vegas because you know they had a funky way of getting their credentials and then coming back up, and they didn't allow people to come back. I mean, how are we supposed to get back on the inside? And then they finally let us in. I'm like, it was it was just this is shit that goes on when you go to fights. But yeah, we were just up there chopping it up a little bit. You know what I'm saying? We was locked outside. I even have pictures of that too. Now. Good morning, Scotty. Manscaped has done it again. Introducing them. Uh, this, however this sounds, it isn't meant to stir up anything up. But like, do you think you have to talk to Virgil? Because obviously they had to fight in the amateurs. They've talked on social media. It's been a fight mentioned throughout boxing that one day could happen. Now they're both. They would both be at 54. Do you just take it because he's such a big client, or do you need to holler at Verge? That's a that's a, that's another good question, man. That's another good question. Shout out to the boxing force. Great question by Ness. You know what I'm saying? Because Virgil Ortiz. You know, that is a division where he came from. And now that the old guard <clears throat> sort of kind of has moved up to 154. Um, that's a good question to ask. Since Virgil Ortiz is one of those fighters that, that's in the ranking system. That could potentially, you know, grace the square with Spence. You know what I'm saying? Um, Virgil Ortiz's return to the ring was short-lived. But, you know, 
It is what it is at the end of the day. You know what I'm talking about? It is what it is. He asked a very good question. If, if, if Garcia is the one that, that has Virgil in there, um, it may get a little awkward. Especially if they choose to fight each other. If they choose to fight each other in the future, that it, it may get a little awkward. This is this is this is something that I'm hearing from you, bro. I, I you know I don't even know if there's even been talk. So so this is a conversation that means nothing because I haven't heard from from nobody even close to 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 Spence or anything like that. I I would talk to the team. You you're saying to Virgil? No, I would talk to the team. I have a team. It's not you know Virgil's obviously my first you know yeah he has to know and we have to talk of course. But but uh, it's the whole team. It's not just you know Virgil. Uh, we would definitely have that conversation. But but right now you know I don't even know where that's coming from because I haven't heard anything from none of them. You know from none of them. You know I I would love to honestly. I would love to have a conversation with them. But listen, uh, listen. But that's not, that's, you fight that's not there. tonight. You fight tonight. You're in Glendale, Arizona. Correct. After your fight, you're only the second fight. After your fight. Just come to Vegas. Earl already announced he's going to be in Vegas for the third minute. So pretty much, I thought that was important because when it comes down to who's going to fight, who's who's going to fight who, <clears throat> you know, this whole mix-up, man. You know, it's good that the attention is there, right? You know, for these names that's coming up from 4754, it's good. It's good. Real talk. It's, 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 it's good to know that these names are floating around the way they are. But once again, when when you got individuals that's trying to be the lead conductors of a, a shit show, it can get it can get very crazy at the end of the day. You know, cheering for a fighter to cut the line as if that's that's considered respectful. You know what I'm saying? When you talk about you want to sponge qualifications and just go off man made or assuming um, popularity points. No one knows where popularity points come from. You hear somebody say, the fans, the fans want to see it. The fans would rather see Spence and, and Zoo rather than Spence Crawford. The fans, who are these fans, though? Where are they located? Can we get them on camera? Are they a large enough consensus to convince the, the box of masses that you're telling the truth? If that's not the case, then you might want to be quiet. Because when y'all get on here and talk about the fans, the fans, the fans, no. No, no, that ain't it. All I heard and seen was people who were up here cheering and acting like the PBC had made some boss move. You know what I'm saying? I mean, how often do y'all have to be stepped on? People people think I was just, you know, putting it out there, just being a hater, so to speak. When I say Spence has, you know, one of the worst, one of the absolute pitiful, pathetic fan bases ever in the sport of boxing. This is a perfect example for two days. They up there jumping, screaming, and yelling, talking about, oh, look at him. He, he, he froze um, Crawford out. Nanny, nanny, boo, boo shit. And then Fondora lose. That's the first explosion that they took. They had no protective gear on. And then when they come out, oh, we want the rematch with Zoo. That's the second explosion. Right now, there's body parts all over the place, bro. What, what, what the hell are you talking about? These, these, this is the worst. I don't want them to be banned from being able to report. I don't know. I want them around. Because as long as you have enough clowns in the circus, the circus won't go out and solicit for new ones. We want the old, we want the, 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 the active clowns right now to stay in the fucking circus, provide us with entertainment, right? So we can have a laugh two or three or four. And so they won't come looking for more. No, we don't want to be a part of your circus. You're doing great. You're doing awesome. Y'all want to cheer on a fighter that, that, that lost to the fighter that you're hating on. So you want to throw away qualifications and say, oh, he can sell out this. He's more of an attraction. And act like Crawford's not an attraction. So let's talk about the WBO situation, which somehow Team Crawford might have believed that Spencer's going to have an opportunity to fight for both of the titles. 
They also might have assumed that Spencer's going to go in there with the same crash dummy style and beat Tim Zhu. Tim Zhu would have been a difficult fight for, for, for EJ and also Fundora. The worst predicament he can be in. Real talk. That's a wishbone that you don't want to have any type of possession. Because both sides of it is lethal. From Tim Zhu and Sebastian Fundora. And you take, you take Errol Spence um, style and Tim Zhu style, it would have been a great fight. I would have liked to see that fight. But the plans was derailed by Team Fundora, which trickled down to, to, to the um, aerosexuals that once again wore their costumes and they found out that they was just the clowns that, that was parading around here for, for temporary entertainment. That's all. They were just here for temporary entertainment to look goofy, to look stupid, and continue to go around here. And show the world that they're the best circus when it comes to boxing fan bases in the world. You know what I'm saying? When that shit went, and and, and Samson, the, the only positive part he said was, um, "We, I have to stick to my verbal agreement. Uh, we have a verbal agreement with with Zoo, and we're gonna stick to that." Well, what does that leave Spence? If we're talking about putting together a a, a freaking um. A special forces team of foxes, you know what I'm saying? Fox Team Three, and y'all, y'all want to be sneaky and shit about it, and, and, and try to get over on people. I mean, where's Fox Team Three? Where are they at? They was up there trying to trying to hoot and holler and cheer. It's like they did Bud a disservice. Bud was going to be waiting on the sideline. Now who's going to be waiting on the sideline? And then not only that, right? Once again, they felt some type of way. They had to go back and soak in their misery. Now we're going to wait and see what Fundora decides to do. Now I'm going to tell you, I believe a thousand percent that Crawford won't sell himself out. I believe he's not going to take step aside money because he's mentioned how he never takes he took step aside money before. He's never did it. He's never did it. And he and Samson and they're talking about Louie. Louie's the smartest man in boxing. Well, well, also you have a fighter who's on the back, back end of his career. Well, you want him to take step aside money when he's trying to add another layer to his legacy, Samson. I think what Samson said was one of the most acute cases. You know, we have a lot of them boxing that we've heard in a long time when it comes to the Crawford bias. He said Crawford has no likable style when he stopped Kell Brook, Sean Porter, Avenesian, and most recently Spence. And you're trying to tell me this man is on here to my he has no likable style. And not only that, look, let me let me let me go and, and um show you something right quick. This is crazy. This is absolutely crazy, man. We're talking about we're in 2024. We're in 2024, y'all. Wasn't Igis Kavalaskis undefeated when Crawford fought him back in 2019? Wasn't he somewhat decorated amateur? They call him Green Machine. You know what I'm saying? They made fun of his last name. He fought him back in December 2019. December 2019 now. Amir Khan, who's been in there with some big names, he fought him back in April 2019. I was there at that fight, Madison Square Garden. He made Khan quit. Jose Benavidez. Was a back and forth tussle all the way until the 12th round where he stopped it. I'm going to stop right here at Jose Benavidez. He also was undefeated. Not to mention Jeff Horn. You know what I'm saying? I, I just had to take it back one more with Jeff Horn because Jeff Horn was at the MGM Grand for the for um, Crawford's debut into the welterweight division. And, and that was June 9th, 2018. 
and he stopped Jeff Horn, the bigger fighter, who had a Pacquiao on his record in the ninth round. But yet Samson's up here saying that Crawford has a no likable style. You sound ignorant. You sound extremely biased. And then he's telling people the fans, the fans want to see from Dora Zoo and Louis. Louis's gonna make the fight happen. I'm pretty sure Fundora don't want to lose his WBO title. I'm 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 banking Louis. I just I'm just too emotional. I can't be in the in the negotiation. I'm just too emotional. Well, you proved you was emotional by saying the bullshit you were saying on here, and letting people know that you have no problem with attempting to inject biasness in the veins of the listeners. This man was saying some incredible bullshit. He said Crawford has no likable style, y'all. He said Crawford just looking for a payday when they keep and when he kept on mentioning options. His options was that he wanted to stay and fight a rematch with Tim Zoo because they can sell out. When you talk about selling out, you're talking about money. They believe Zoo and Fundora, who's never even been up or even been a part of any reports of selling out a ninety thousand capacity. He wants to do it. Why? Because of the money. He don't. He want to do it because of the money, y'all. The money, 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 man. He wants to do it because of the money. The money, y'all. He wants a rematch because he he saw all that blood and he feel like the rematch is gonna be much better than the first fight. So what is that considered? A payday. He was mad that Crawford wouldn't take 50-51 from Dora. And he said, that would never happen. That would never happen. But then, when asked about Spence, he said Spence is willing to take 50-50. So why don't you go ahead and fight Spence then? Why don't you go ahead and fight Spence? Since you're talking about 90000 why don't you go ahead and fight Spence? Why are you fighting freaking Tim Zoo? All because you want to now put it out there that you had a verbal agreement? Why do you want to fight freaking Zoo? Because they, they he, he was cut early and it turned into a motherfucking bloodbath? Why do you want to fight Zoo? Fight Spence, man. Go ahead. You said he agreed to 50-50. You said Crawford didn't rate 50-50, so to speak. I mean, he didn't rate any any more than 50-50. After everything he's accomplished, Samson was up here saying Crawford doesn't rate it. That would never happen. His ego. Samson was using all these words that you use to criticize and insult somebody. He's saying it's not okay for Crawford to basically negotiate the highest dollar amount like Canelo. It's not okay. He's trying to do what Canelo does. No, Canelo is getting paid, which when he retires, that money is still going to be there and be at the, be accessible to Canelo to continue to support him and his family as he hang up the gloves into the rest of his life. So it's not okay for Crawford to do that. And I, like I said before, I find it extremely prejudiced. I, I find it extremely prejudiced when you want to disallow someone to do something that's considered productive. You know what I'm saying? Something that has proclivity to it, right? You can't sit up here and just be mad and reduce to somebody else's um, attempt because you don't like what they're doing. It's almost like, like I say back in the day, you mad because he know how to read. You see these subtleties, right? He says it's okay for Canelo to do it. He praised Floyd for being able to do it. But it's a problem if Crawford attempt to do something that isn't considered a, a, a malicious attempt at anything. He's up here trying to negotiate the best way he can as far as his worth. Just like Canelo did. Just like Floyd did. Just like many other fighters. Just like Teo did. Teo negotiated his worth with Lomachenko. Then he chose to go to a purse bid with Cambozo. But you saying all Crawford want is a payday? No, you all want a payday. And it's fucked up that you're trying to bring down, you know, you're, you're, you're talking about all the hearsay 
That's what you heard. That's what you heard. That's what you heard. Crawford wants 15 million. That's what I heard. That's what I heard. Well, so what if he wants 15 million? When we hear Canelo wants 25, 30, 35 million people's life, who gonna get the money? Huh? 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 Who gonna get the money? Canelo wants 35 million. Who gonna get the money? Y'all better hurry up. Y'all better find a way to get the money. Find him to get the money. Find a way to get Canelo his money. Don't then you better not be late. You better not be late. Who's going to get in the money? Where are you going to fight? Uh, somebody's going to get in that money. He's going to get that money. Canelo. That's Canelo right there. Canelo going to get that money. Crawford won 15 minutes. What? Man, he must be stupid as hell. He won 15 million. For what? He ain't did shit. He ain't did shit. He ain't beat nobody. Man, he from Omaha, man. Just from being from Omaha alone, you ain't getting 15 million. We can't give you no more than five, man. Come on. Yeah, how are you going to sit up there and criticize somebody for negotiating their paycheck? You don't want that man. He's talking about uh, his ego. His ego. And, 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 and Canelo don't have an ego? Canelo is fighting the homie Mungia? Uh, Canelo can fight his shadow. And he said, I want 35, 40 million for fighting my shadow. Okay, who's going to get that money? Somebody better hurry and get the Canelo money. Get Canelo money. Somebody better come forward and give him his money. I know he's going to get uh, that, that, that money he asked for for his shadow. That's going to be a good fight right there. Oh, man, Canelo versus Canelo. That's going to be a damn good fight right there. I'm telling you, y'all. Samson was on his bullshit the other day. Let me get to the chat, man. You know what I'm saying? Haynes Legacy in the building. What's good with it, man? I see you. One love to your brother. Sebastian team said Crawford wouldn't be the A-side. Speaking of the A-side, you make a good point, man. Look, he said it never happened of Crawford, you know what I'm saying, getting higher than 50%. It'll never happen. That would never happen here. He's, he's putting it out there. It would never happen. You know what I'm saying? He's consummating. He's clipping it at the end, y'all. He's making sure it's done. He will never. That's his way of saying we don't want to fight him because, once again, check this out. Benavidez has shown that he's willing to take the smaller amount and he's willing to capitulate all that shit. And it still ain't good enough. Right? They want Crawford Two-time undisputed, multi-time lineal, fight of the year award. I mean, fight of the year awards, pound for pound, pound pound for pound, best in the world. And this idiot is sitting up here talking about Fondora is the A side when Gennady Golovkin wasn't in the A side when Canelo was moving up to fifty-four. I mean, to sixty. How can you forget? How, how the fuck can you get, forget? Mark on deck. I see you in the building, man. Why? He said, Errol needs to hire Ben Davidson. Why? Please explain. I would like to know. I'm not going against the grain. I just want to know why. You know, if y'all put that up there, why do you feel he should hire Ben Davidson? Just based off what Joshua did to to, to freaking Otto Valine and, and, and freaking Francis Ngannou, why do you believe this should be the way it is. Just enlighten me. I, I, I like to be educated, man. Nigga like me is not afraid to be educated, man. You know, I want I want to retain something that's that's pot not positive, but um conducive. You know what I'm saying? That's educational. That's all. Please explain. Shout out to Brim in the building. Salute to you, man. <clears throat> this is a friendly daily reminder Errol Spencer's a fraud. Hey man, I'm trying to, you know, I'm trying to find out if Errol Spencer can get a new trainer, which, you know, per the boxing voice, they had Robert Garcia on, and he made some good points. But, but you know, I'm not sure if Errol Spence at this point, you know, people talking about teaching the old dog new tricks and all that. An old dog can, can learn new tricks. It's just... Who the teacher is going to teach him. That's all. Old dog can learn new tricks. Real talk. Seriously. 
It's just with Spence, he's going to have to be open-minded and willing to learn, man. He don't do lines. Yeah, for real. Shout out to Conquest in the building. He don't do lines, man. He don't do lines. So, so being that there are various amounts of lines, maybe he'll do side lines because that's what it looked like he's going to be at. You know what I'm saying? He might not do, you know, a straight line. You know what I'm saying? But, you know, he might he might do side lines. You know, on the side lines, you know what happened over there. There's a bench. There are stands. So maybe he can find his place in the stand on the, on, on the bench until he finds somebody to coach. I, I, I don't know if him and Diddy James are seriously departed or they're in the process. But I like what Robert Garcia was saying. He ain't going to have it easy over there. And also, Ness made a very uh, another valid point about Virgil Ortiz. You know, Virgil Ortiz is a 154-pounder. Spence is up there now. I'm not sure how long he's going to be in that division. But sooner or later, you, you, you got to think about it. Okay, they're going to spar each other if he does go work with Garcia. He's going to have to talk with Virgil about it. So him and Virgil is going to have to spar sooner or later. And, and, and come on, man. It ain't going to be no easy task. Shout out to MD in the building. What's good with it, brother? Salute to you. Crawford cut his teeth in that gym as well. He wasn't a fighter there, but he worked out. If there's a sparring partner, okay. Okay, good to know, man. You know what I'm saying? Good to know. You know what I'm saying? Crawford been around the world. Nyah, nyah, nyah. I can't find no stories. To validate these haters saying. Carlos in the building. What's good with it, Carlos? Salute, man. Let me say salute. Arrow can have Angelo Dundee, Eddie Futch, um, Brother Nazim, uh, Manuel Stewart, Bud still wins. Uh, that's, I, don't, I don't know if I want to touch that, man. Uh, I don't know if I want to touch that or not. Because, listen. It's not the fact that it's wrong what you're saying. I'm just looking at, would he be able, would he would have been a, a disciplined enough to, to, to be under the the teachings of those legends right there? I don't know if he is, man. That's my whole thing, too. See, I'm not just putting Spence in, into another trainer's, um, um, what's the word I'm looking for? I'm not trying to put him into um, someone else's um, custody, so to speak, right? I'm not just trying to throw him into another trainer's custody to be trained. I'm looking at, does it make sense of me believing that Spence will be productively listening? You know what I'm saying? He will be retaining knowledge and 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 basically showing and, 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 and basically... Showing them that he's listening and he's producing. Listening, producing. He's being taught. You know what I'm saying? Uh, I'm not sure if he'd be able to go in there and, and show them that he's learning the curriculum under the intense circumstances. Because I know I know Robert Garcia is not going to be playing with him. I don't know the type of relationship that him and Derek has when it comes to Derek actually making Spence do something he don't want to do. W says the arrow sections are believing arrow will be different 154. Um, your style is your style, and Spence won't or isn't able to adjust his style, in my humble opinion. Wasn't Spence on the pound for pound list? Doesn't he have 28 victories? The man was able to blaze himself enough to 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 um a hierarchy where people consider him to be one of the best in boxing, y'all. Seriously, at one point in time, what he was doing was working for him. Until it got to a point where he was going in there with the fighter that was on the radar for a long period of time. But due to the people around him, they took it for a joke, Carlos. They didn't take it serious like you should for the art of war. You should never take anyone, any opponent, any adversary, any foe, lightly. Because they may possess something that you have not experienced yet as a combat specialist. You know what I'm saying? And that's what happened with Spence. They had so many people over here saying, no, no, he ain't fought nobody, he ain't fought nobody. And then they got what they got. 
Shout out to the OG Mr. Golden on deck. What it do, man? I'll see you. Hustle man on deck. Salute, man. What's good? What's good? I see you. And shout out to everybody that's in the workforce right now, man. It's Tuesday, from my understanding. Shout out to everyone that's out there getting in there and making a living and, and, and knowing what they're worth. Because they're trying to say Crawford. You know, Samson was over here trying to say Crawford getting more than 50 cents. Never. It will never happen. Well, you just don't want your fighter to be great. And, and and just and just look at the contradiction. The contradicting is so bad with Samson. He's saying that he's trying to advocate for, for, for Sebastian Fundora, right? He's trying to advocate percentages the first time he's ever became unified champion. And he's saying, my fighter going up against a fighter that has a, a, a larger catalog. He's advocating for Fundora to get 50%. He's advocating for his fighter to get high purse. But yet, it's not good for Crawford, who's been fighting longer than Fundora, to do the exact same thing. You see what a bias and prejudice is at? Discrimination? It is. It's, it's blaring right there in your face, man. He wants to advocate early for Fundora to get this money. But yet, he's, he's frowning upon it. Because Crawford's doing the same thing. He's saying he's just looking for a payday. This man is 40 and old, and this idiot is up here talking about Crawford's looking for a payday. He just beat the guy who thought he was in line to fight for the titles. And you're just ignoring that. He, he, he's just ignoring. Ness told you he has 11 knockouts. All right, Crawford. Yeah, Crawford has no likable style. I he, he fight that of Devin Haney. You sound ignorant. Now you sound like you're illiterate. You sound like you're illiterate. If somebody is 36 years old and been in boxing as long as they have, you're trying to say he's trying to do Canelo. He's trying to do Canelo. No, he's trying to negotiate his worth. Just like you're trying to pretend that Sebastian is worth more than what he is. So you must have a starting point. And your starting point is now based off that fight. So you want to ride the momentum and go back in there and tell people, I just sell out 90,000. Prove that they'll sell out 90,000. Put, put 90,000 motherfuckers in that seats and come up with a, a ticket price that's too fucking high. And see how many damn sections be empty as hell. And, and you there looking stupid. I, 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 I get too emotional. I get too emotional. I was just emotional. I thought it could happen. I'm just too emotional. And Louie, Louie. Where you at, Louie? I, I got too emotional, Louie. Look at the seats up there. There's nobody's in the seats, Louie. What are we going to do, Louie? Save me, Louie. Louie, get Crawford on the line. Maybe we can fight him next, Louie. And fill up these seats, Louie. Come on, man. He up there putting this astronomical number out there. So Team Crawford wanted to do that. Hey, hey. You want to do this? You do 90. Ah, oh, Crawford ain't. He didn't learn. He didn't learn from the Diddy James and Errol Spence disaster. When they freaking hit that motherfucking Omaha Glacier. And that shit beached. Motherfucking cracked in half and it sunk. And you heard all these voices like, no, man, get out of here. Sounds stupid, man. Shit sound crazy as hell. Don't y'all ever believe what you've been hearing out here about this freaking, this, this, ball, of, this ball of yarn that's rolling around and, and nodding people's common sense. You know what I'm saying? It, it, it's okay when others do it. Negotiate a higher price. But somehow... Crawford will go down in history as one of the most successful, greatest fighters of this era, but one of the most hated boxers of this era. And, and this is just a clear example of a, somehow it, might, it must be his dark skin complexion. It might be the way he look. I don't know. He give you the throwback Joe Frazier look sometime. I, I don't know what it is. But, but you know, um, 
I don't think he's going to really get his glory until he's he's out the sport in general. But you 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 know he he's been on record. Crawford's been on record as saying he always had to prove himself. So being here to prove himself, his mentality is different once he does go to battle. He's going in there to prove not only that he can get the win, but he's going in there and he's going in there to prove the naysayers that was talking all that shit about him. That's all. He's there to prove it to him. That like some people say, oh man, don't worry about them, man. Let they talk or they talk. Let it bounce. Let it just go in one ear and out the other. Let's just let it just bounce off your chest and you keep on marching forward, man. You're stronger than that. No, Crawford's mentality is no, I want to prove it to him. I want to do it to him in the worst way possible. Because that's the stain they're gonna have for a minute. And there's a lot of arrow arrow sexuals is out there that they still stain, man. You know what I'm saying? Sometimes when you get beat up. The bruises may heal on the surface, but that shit stay the same internally. And that's where the Errol Sex was that They bruised up. So when they finally saw Errol Spence coming out there, and, and you look, these are the same people that was talking about how he didn't have no trainer and, and his trainer made, and you know suing him and shit like that. They start cheering Errol on. Once again, doing shit that don't make any sense in boxing. They, they look. The arrow section is, is is eager to talk about EJ not paying his trainer, but yes, this is the same dude that said he had cataracts before he went into the fight July 29th, and he knew about them. That's why he was getting hit hooked with jabs and hooks. So I'm asking myself, without a jury, this is straight to the motherfucking gavel. Who's at fault? Is it you, EJ, for 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 freaking having cataracts supposedly all that time? Or is it Diddy James? Was his fight plan not equitable for you to go in there and beat the Omaha, the ghost of Crawford? Which one is it? I'm not confused. I suggest Spence goes in there, find another trainer, and somehow we, we start talking up this rematch. Okay, Aerosexuals? I want us to start talking up this rematch, potentially. But but Arrow needs to get with a different trainer to pair for Crawford. That's my suggestion. I don't want this, you know, you're talking about less weight. Crawford got to use less weight that, that Spence have to lose. This should be the fight of all fights. This should be what the fans look for. And I don't want to hear no freaking excuses. I don't want to hear no excuses, man. I just want to see what's next for Crawford, man. I want to see what's next for Spence. If you're going to ask me, do I want to see a, another fight between these two? My, my, my answer to you in a hurry will be absolutely... Yes, I want to see, but I want Spence to be in the best shape of his life because I don't have any more within my my fund for donations. You know what I'm saying? I don't have any more funds left over allotted to, to paper towels, toilet paper, goddamn Kleenex. You know what I'm saying? I don't have the budget for that. So right now, if y'all bitches out there crying, I'm going to get you some sandpaper. It's not gonna be the roughest grade, but but my, that's what that's where my budget's at right now. You gonna have to dry them tears up with sandpaper. It's gonna be a little. It's gonna sting a little bit now. But I'm tired of spending money on toilet paper, paper towels. You know what I'm saying, Kleenex. No, I'm tired of hearing y'all bitching complaining. Y'all was up here jumping around. Um, speaking, no, what you should be doing is trying to find out who Errol Spence trainer is going to be. That's 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 what I'm concerned. I, I really would like for him to get another trainer, learn some learn some new technique, get his mindset different. Um, you know, he say he's been living out of pocket his whole life. He's brags about it. You just get him to you know go to training and live out of pocket. Um, have him fall in love with training again. I don't think. Errol Spence is in love with training again. You know what I'm saying? I, I don't think he is. 
I'm not saying he's content with the results that he got with Crawford. But just the fact that he walked up in that ring and 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 saying now now you're gonna deal with the big dog, I'm gonna chop him down. People people didn't believe that. And you should automatically goddamn file a lawsuit against the individuals who persuaded you to go through those ropes and say that shit. You should file a lawsuit for defamation of character. Yes. Because you absolutely defame any character you might have had left over there, EJ. Nobody wanted to see you go in there besides them freaking, them goofy aerosexuals. And they was up here cheering. Oh, yeah. There he is. There he is. Screenshot it. Screenshot it. Screenshot it. Oh, yeah. Screenshot it. I'm going to put that in the frame tomorrow. EJ is back. Yes. Mm-hmm. They were so motherfucking happy. And then the WBO put out, you would negotiate with Terrence Cropper. Crawford, not the Errol Spence. Okay, Fandor? You're not doing what you think you're doing. I don't care what the hell Samson is talking about. You will negotiate with Crawford and not Spence. Are we clear? I shall not repeat myself. If you see me again, it will be life-threatening. You understand me? I'm, I'm, I'm just saying, y'all. They was up here jumping up and down for joy. And now they're talking about not even considering Spence, but honoring a verbal agreement before the fight to go back into a rematch with Zoo. All because Zoo, he took the fight on short notice and he should be rewarded. Well, um, Terrence Crawford took fights on regular notice. And got him up out of there. And they're acting like he deserves zero praise for that shit. You know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? I can't make this shit up. Real talk, I can't make this shit up. He took fight on regular notice. He's fought in other fighters' backyard. He's made fighters quit. Errol Spence didn't quit. But he was on the brink of being forced to. He ain't no punk, man. He's 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 very dognacious now. You know what I'm saying? He's very dognacious. But his dognacious wasn't enough when he was dealing with that monster. And 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 I hope to God he finds somebody. If they plan around and he's going back to Diddy James, he's doomed. Not the regular Doom. We're talking about spelling Doom with about 10 O's in the middle. 10 big O's. He's doomed. If he goes back to Diddy James, he's doomed. Diddy James is not qualified to come up with a suitable game plan. We're about to see something materialize here. Either one or two things may occur, y'all. He has Frank Martin is coming up. And he has the one and only Ryan Lyon Garcia on deck. I'm going to tell you, we're going to be able to see them before we see anything with Spence. And I, I'm putting it out there. If these guys go 0-2, you aerosexuals need to bring your freaking punk ass back on here. And you need, to, you need to apologize for building his ass up the way you did, talking all that shit. We got two big fights. We got Frank Martin, Javante Davis, legitimate, certified, official. And we got Ryan Lyon Garcia going in there against certified, official Devin Haney. If D Diddy James go 0-2, you better very well have your ass back in this motherfucking seat. Have somebody duct tape your ass to the seat. Because you ain't leaving until we finish asking questions. We want to hear your criticism... Your apologies, and we want to hear you read off a farewell saying that you're going to leave YTC for a certain amount of time to get your life together. Because you was up here bigging this dude up, and he wasn't who he said he was. He just had the right names in his, in his stable for him to, you know, make a little climb, get a couple of awards, 
Now he's exposed because the competition is definitely right there in his doorstep and he don't know what to do with it. You just can't tell them no soliciting. Uh-uh, no soliciting. We're not fighting no soliciting. No trespassing. I'm about to call the law. Get off my property. No trespassing. But we're talking about a fight, um, Derrick James. That's all. Get off my property. No trespassing. No solicitation. You up here trying to solicit a fight, man. Man, why are you soliciting a fight, man? He ain't fought nobody, man. Y'all still talking about brother? He ain't fought nobody. But but he fought he fought your guy last year. Man, he was way drained. Come on. He was way drained. Even though Derrick James has been on record. And 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 from my understanding, he hasn't made any excuses about freaking EJ and, and being weight drained and all that. He ain't he ain't did it. You know, he said he was in his right frame of mind and all that shit. But we all know what what all them aerosexuals out here doing. You know, they was out here um walking around the picket line with these these motherfucking signs. He was robbed. He was robbed. And then some had no more cloning. No more cloning. They was out there looking crazy, sounding crazy, man. No more weight draining. No more weight draining. I want him to be healthy. Send him to Robert Garcia cap. If he's willing to lock in and stay there the whole time, I think um, EJ will come out of there looking smooth. Looking way better than he did. And take it from there. You know what I'm saying? Besides that, I'm not advocating for him to go looking around for a coach. Because ultimately, he's been in boxing longer than I have. He's been actual in the ring. So, you know, I'm, I'm just I'm just looking for, since he's 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 in a, um, a no-fly zone right now. I wonder, is he going to try to get on the phone and, 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 and get a fight with Crawford? I, I want to know what the motherfucking negotiation appraising value of the percentages is going to be. Just like Samson. Oh, man. I nobody give a fuck about what happened last year, man. We in 2024, man. You don't rate no 50%. Man, man. Come on, man. Come on, Crawford, man. Come on, man. I'm the draw, man. Come on, man. Let's go to AT&T, man. Come on. Let me let me get a hometown fight, man. Come on. You, you fought in goddamn Omaha. Right? You fought in Omaha? Yeah, I did. You want to go to Omaha? Hell no, nigga, man. You ain't trying to rob me now. I'm, oh, I'm trying to come back from a loss, man. I need for you to come over there so I can be sipping on that Texas tea, man. I got to get hydrated. I don't want to be weight drained no more, man. You know I ain't going to never be weight drained in Texas. Okay? Can, can we go over there to Texas, please? Please. I'll talk to Jerry, and we can make this out. Come on, bud. Bud, come on over to Texas, man. Come on, man. I just want to be able to cut weight properly, man. Drink that Texas tea, man. Get hydrated. Be right. I want to give you the best performance ever. The only way I can do it is in Texas, man. It's got to be in Texas. Yeah, yeah, bud. Bud is say, hey, I, I'll do it in Texas, man. The split going to be 70-30. Nah, man. See, man, you ain't fought nobody, man, but me. You ain't fought nobody but me, man. Man, it's me, man. Hey. It's me. Come on, man. It's me. <laughs> man, I bullshit you not, man. Them niggas gonna be tripping. MKB in the building. What's good with him, Money King? The loser sections will be on suicide watch after it's all said and done. Don't put them. Don't put them on suicide watch, dog. Come on, man. Don't do that, dog. Don't put them on suicide watch. Let them live, Carlos. Let them live, Shotty. Let them live. Let them live. Shout out to Black on Deck. They'll never apologize. They're really some degenerate suckers that love being fangirls and purposely spreading misinformation. One thing I have known to come to fruition lately, based off what you just said, was the misinformation. Incredible. But what's good about misinformation one time is that sometimes when you're at the plate and you're trying to hit what you consider to be a home run, you found out you struck out and the bat comes back around and hits you in your motherfucking head. And that's just about what happened with the aerosexuals recently. The aerosexuals found out that maybe they shouldn't be at the plate to begin with. 
You know what I'm saying? Maybe that was it. They never should have been at the plate to begin with, y'all. Seriously. Never should have been at the plate to begin with. They they hurry up and ran up there because they felt that that, you know, just because um Spence sent out a tweet. But look, this is what I said before. Who put you up to this shit? Look, just like I said the shit about BLK Prime. You get all your information together prior to. You think about where those people are gonna go in the conversation. And you're trying to you're trying to already have that taken care of. That's why it was a catastrophe. Spence hopping in the ring was an absolute catastrophe. Why? Because they didn't do their homework. They was up there guessing, betting that Zoo was going to get the win. They was betting that Zoo was going to get the win. And they had no plan that Fondora ended up getting the, getting the win himself. What was plan B? Once again. Obviously, they didn't take they didn't talk to Team Fondora. That's why I know that slip that he had in his hand was bullshit. Because if you was betting on Fondora, his team would have known you was betting on Fondora. So they would have been showing you mad love after the fight like they they showing Tim Zhu. They would have said, hey, we made an agreement with um, Errol Spence. And yes, I'm going to honor my agreement with Errol Spence. And he's going to fight in November. We just have to get this nose um, worked on. He's going to be back in November to fight Errol Spence. I will honor. Okay. You will not honor your agreement. That's what gave me more. That would have provided more credibility for me. When he was talking about he betted on Fondora. I mean, it's all a sham, man. Like, how would you bet on Fondora, but everything was riding on Zoo? You was, everything was riding on Zoo because they were saying Spence Crawford Canelo. Spence Crawford Canelo. But you came into the ring after Fondora won and you held up a ticket like you bet it for Fondora. Okay, so let's just say he did. He bet it from Fondora. It doesn't fucking matter because his team don't like you. His team ain't showing you no love. They made a damn verbal agreement to fight Zoo in a rematch, dog. So all this betting on Fondora to win, where is it now? Where is the forward progress to say, guess what? We're going we're gonna to fight Spence for, first. And then we're going to move on and give Zoo a rematch after that. No. It was no communication. No communication, bro. Where's the communication? Unless something else pops up that they're talking and trying to make some thing happen, I, I don't see it. I don't see it. They've been mentioning zoo, zoo, zoo. You know what I'm saying? Um, honoring, honoring, honoring. Right? But the only thing I'm looking forward to be honored is the WBO stripping Pandora of the WBO title just like they did Crawford. Just like the IBF did Crawford. And I'm looking for Crawford to be able to fight for the vacant. That's it. That's it. You know what I'm saying? That's what I'm waiting on, y'all. Real talk. That's what I'm waiting on. That's what I'm waiting on right there. I'm waiting on this results from the WBO on what's going to happen with Fondora either fighting Crawford or vacating. I am absolutely 1000% confident that Crawford is not going to take no step aside money at this stage in his career and as a man in general. I don't see it. I don't see it, y'all. I don't see it, but for the aerosexuals, they can definitely see Errol Spence taking 50-50. Uh, look, imagine this, y'all. I'm going to hit y'all with another one, right? You can channel your DJ Khaled, right? I'm about to hit you with another one on how crazy this shit sounds. Y'all remember when the negotiation was coming up? It wasn't, you know, like, like in 2022 when everybody felt like they was a CFO. 
and they and they and they was a part of the boxing regime, and, and they the one who built boxing from the ground up. You remember when everybody had their numbers about what Crawford should get against Spence, and it was like, oh, it should be seventy thirty, if that, if that. They should take what they give them. Hey, hey, hey! You heard you heard Mel Charlo talking that take what given that slave talk, right? Right? Y'all remember that, right? Y'all remember in 22 when they was talking about what Crawford should take and what Spence should get? 70-30? 60-40? Everybody was throwing those numbers out there to say that Crawford shouldn't get any more than this 30%. And, and, and you know, Spence was on record saying, we'll give him 80-20. We'll fuck around and give him 80-20. He was joking about that, right? And you heard Jamel Charles talking about be the challenger. Shut up. Sit down. Take what they give you. Y'all remember all that? Well, how about when Samson said that, that, that Spence is willing to take 50-50 against Fondora and Fondora has less accolades than Crawford at this, at this juncture in his career? Now, once again, hold up. Hold up, y'all. Y'all hold up. Y'all just hear what I said? Samson was on record as saying that Errol Spence said he's agreed to 50-50 when these dang um, unemployed life coaches was over there in 2022 up here talking about all oh, this, ah, oh, this is what should happen. This is what they're talking about. Um, you know, Crawford shouldn't get this and Spence rates 70%. Where are you now, Errol Sexuals? After hearing Sampson say that Errol Spence is willing to take 50-50 on a fighter who just picked up the titles, man. He don't even have the credentials or resume of Bud Crawford. Where are y'all at? That's why I can't respect it. That's why I can't respect this bullshit. He's on record saying Spence said he'll take 50-50 on this shit, y'all. What happened to the energy? Where y'all motherfuckers at? What happened to the motherfucking energy, man? This dude is on record saying he'll take 50-50 against Fondor. But yet when it came to Crawford, who had way more credentials than Fondor, he was up there trying to play hardball. We'll give him 80-20, whatever he do. And then Brian Custer asked him, oh, you said you will give Crawford 80-20. You still stand on that? When did I say that? <laughs> I just laughed. <laughs> you feel me? I'm like, what the fuck? I'm not hearing the energy, y'all. Where is the energy in hearing Errol Spence willing to take 50-50 desperation championship where he might get blood? Look, obliterated. I'm sticking on the money now. Selling out. This dude said he's willing to take 50-50 when I never heard this at, at, at 147 when he was um, negotiating potentially to face Crawford. When everybody had all the numbers, man. Why am I not hearing you all talk about why would he take 50-50 against Fondor? He already been unified champion, pound for pound list, man. He he fought Crawford. Yeah, he came up short, but he did it, man. So, hey, y'all should show that respect. Why, y'all? Why don't we hear the energy from the aerosexuals knowing that Samson just exposed Spence for taking 50-50 against... What? He's willing to take 50-50 against Fondora? But not Crawford? I'm talking about back in 22 where everybody was talking they bullshit. No way. Crawford. Mm-mm. 70, 30, 80, 20, whatever we want to give him. But he had way more accolades at the time than Fondora ever will in his entire career. And you was just so angry. You refuted, rejected those numbers. PBC wants to goddamn have y'all on net pay. But here we go with Fundora who just won the titles. Haven't even had a full week yet as a champion. And you as a former unified champion, EJ, 
who needs a coach, by the way. Samson put him on blast and said he's willing to take 50-50. Oh, my God. And these aerosexuals, you are afraid to come forward and got down, you know, um, sp speak your peace and hold Spence to the fire. You're not willing to say, why would he just take 50-50 against Fondora? Y'all going to look, y'all going to come up with some shit. Hey, check this out, y'all. They're they going to come up with some shit saying, man, what do you expect him to do, man? He just lost to Crawford. But what if it would have been Crawford who was in Errol Spence position? No, nah, no, nah, let's not do that. Let's not do that. No, nah, uh -uh, let's not do that right there. Because I can't put Crawford in Spence situation. I can't. They're not the same fighter, man. They're not the same person. I can't I can't sit up here and, and do that to, to, to Bud. I can't put him in Craw I can't put him in Spence position because Spence be making dumbass decisions. I can't do that to him. I can't say what if Crawford was in Errol Spence position. Would y'all be showing him this type of silence? Would you be giving him this silence, y'all? Would you be up there like, oh man, he, he gave it his all, yo. He was weight drained. No, they would have said Crawford, he never proved that he, he he's supposed to be there anyway. He got exposed. He never was supposed to be there. Look at his resume. We went over his resume a thousand times and it all came back the same unqualified he ain't fought nobody on there that was on the level of Spence Spence exposed him on the 29th that's because he ain't never fought nobody D D Derek James said it Spence said it at the presser all that he, he ain't never fought nobody so all that shit with Julius and Dongo man that was a fraud that shit was bogus that's that what they that's that's what they would have said y'all but all of a sudden, Spence is taking 50-50 so easily? This is your Lord, your King, your God, your Savior? And he's taking 50-50 so fucking easy? And y'all up here quiet, tight-lipped? Y'all niggas afraid to speak? You speaking every other time? No debate series? Let's debate that shit. Let's start up the debate series again and talk about why Spence is willing to take 50-50 against Fondora and Fondora just picked up the titles. Fondora bought, look, Fondora beat one person, one fighter for, the, for, for, for a title. The other one was vacant. But yet Spence is up there saying, I'll take 50-50. He's earned it, man. He's earned it. Fondora's earned it. He did. He earned it. He, he beat him fair and square. He earned it. Spence is willing to take 50-50 from a guy. Hey, check this out now. This is going to be another hitter. From a guy who just got off the canvas from being knocked out brutally. Where is the tough man? Armor. Where are all the Marvel comics at? Spence is willing to take 50-50. He owes his trainer money, supposedly, but he's willing to take 50-50, y'all, against a fighter who just got off the canvas to get an opportunity to fight Tim Zhu, who's already WBO champion, and they fought for the vacant. This is the guy who just got off the canvas. But, not so much. He wasn't getting off the canvas. He was just there to challenge and become greater. And that's what he did. He took Spence's titles. And, and that right there, people were saying, oh, man, Bud don't rate this. Bud don't rate that. Why aren't y'all saying Fondora don't rate 50-50 versus EJ? Why are y'all so motherfucking quiet, dog? I'm concerned. Why aren't y'all on here saying that Fondora don't rate 50-50 because he's Mexican? Huh? Y'all pussy scared? You want y'all the one that chose to support this cat, right? So if you chose to support him, stand by him and and and, and challenging controversy, goddammit. Don't run the fuck away right now, man. Stay and hold your ground. Why aren't you up here complaining that Fondora don't rate 50% against Errol Spence and Errol Spence? Shouldn't be saying he'll take 50% against Fondor. Why haven't I heard the protest yet? 
Once again, you aerosexual. Why haven't I heard the protest yet? Don't say I'm crying because I'm picking up my tongue. No, I'm just dumping this hot grease all on your motherfucking necks. That's all. I want the shit to run down your motherfucking spinal region that's not there. Y'all niggas are not trying to speak up and, 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 and have a live stream and say, why, why, why EJ willing to take 50% against Fondor? And Fondor just won the titles, man. Man, uh, AJ's did all the heavy lifting. Huh? Y'all niggas don't want to speak? You said at 147 he did all the heavy lifting. Okay, Crawford collected all the heavy lifters. He collected the rest. Now you're at 154 and he jumps in the ring and y'all niggas happy because he put out a video, but yet you're not willing to speak on Samson and what he said. He said, Errol Spence is willing to take 50-50 and they want to criticize Bud for what? Demanding higher than 50-50. How does that shit work when y'all was in 2022 pretending to be chief financial officers and telling me what Bud don't rate? What does Fundora rate and don't rate? Please allow me to hear what you have to say. What does Fundora rate and don't rate? What does he rate and don't rate? Why aren't y'all alone here doing all the mathematical equations? Don't let me start calling out these channels now. Don't let me start putting you on ID watch. Why aren't y'all so, why are y'all so hesitant? Excuse me. Why are y'all so hesitant? To talk that talk. I want to hear that talk, y'all. The talk where you where you knew all the numbers and who should get what based off their resume. What about Fundora's resume? What about Fundora's resume, y'all? Huh? I want to know about what coach is going to train him up. Where should he go? Is he going to pay Diddy James? And why aren't y'all freaking questioning his actions as of late? Y'all a bunch of motherfucking cowards, man. Y'all don't want to speak up about shit. Unless, unless it's something to, to um, defame another freaking, um, you know, boxer that you don't like. Y'all niggas have Crawford in your titles all the time. But yet, the, the reason why is because you didn't like him when it came to Spence. Now Spence is in the headlines again, and you don't want to goddamn make him hold, hold him accountable, rather, and make him um, aware that you, you have a problem with him taking 50% with Fondora. Then y'all gonna come on here with some lame ass fucking excuse talking about well he he he's taking fifty percent because he just came off a loss with Crawford. But Crawford was a pound for pound fighter just like Spence though. So both of them was on the goddamn list together. Uh, Fundora wasn't. So how does Fundora just because Samson, how does Fundora team believe he's fifty fifty with, with freaking Crawford and Spence? It's no way that's possible. Because in one sense, y'all say Crawford didn't rate fifty percent, and the other one you say goddamn Spence rate more than fifty percent. But y'all quiet as fuck when it come here to Fondor and his and his and his um Samson up here talking about Spence has agreed. And Ness asks, um, is that to be true? Where did you hear that from? Is that to be true? Is there any way we can get that so so Spence has agreed to 50%? Yes! Yes, Spence has agreed to 50%. And I'm 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 waiting. I got my ear, I got my hand up to my ear. I said, I don't hear shit. Let me see. Let me see. Let me see. Let me turn up the motherfucking volume. Volume already maxed out. Shit. Let me go ahead and get a Q-tip. I went and got a Q-tip. Clean my shit out. You know, I swabbed my shit down. And, you know, whatever. And I did a motherfucking audio check. I knocked on the wall to see can I hear it. Yep. Hear that? Turn my head. Knocked on the wall. Yep. And I hear it. I still don't hear what I want to, though. Where are all the big channels? Where's baby side at? Huh? Where baby side at, man? I remember when you lost your wits about Bernie the Boxer. Where are all your freaking commentary at, baby side? You was all amped up and so verbal about what Crawford should and shouldn't get. Where is... 
the 50-50 talk at? How in the hell a fighter like Fondora allows Errol Spence to agree to 50-50 so easily, y'all? Y'all remember that negotiations was running the way it was because they say that Crawford was stalling out trying to get all this money that he didn't rate. And every time the conversation reached the surface, it was like, you know, EJ rates this much money. You know what I'm saying? EJ rates this. Crawford don't rate that. Where is it now, though? This man is just so easily agreeing to 50-50. Wow. That shit is crazy, bro. That shit is crazy, y'all. I remember when Bud tweeted Spence what date they were supposed to fight in 22. And Spence never answered. Yeah, man. You know, he said they was just holding him up, man. Wasting his time. You know what I'm saying? They said they had me up here thinking that the fight was going to happen this year. And they never had any plans to because Spence was on vacation. You know what I'm saying? That shit crazy. You know what I'm saying? That shit is fucking crazy, yo. Fondora is now Arrow's level. But Crawford got every reason why he shouldn't get 50-50. Hey, that's, I, I, that's all I'm saying, MKB. Like, man, that's why I had to go back to the 2-2, two -two, the deuce-deuce. Because all these motherfuckers on here acting like they was dang. In, I mean, sitting at the table, y'all. They had like they was running the numbers, man. Like it was an audit session. They had like they was running an audit session on, on, on Crawford. Uh, Crawford couldn't get shit. Um, no. Um, no. Um, no. Well, what about EJ? You think we should stand firm on 70? Um, yes. Um, yes. And yes. So don't go no farther than 70%. Mm, nope. No. They didn't want to go nowhere, y'all. But Samson's on record saying Spence has already agreed to 50-50. Where did the resistance go? Did Crawford beat him up on him? Or you just have a desperate fighter that never was in control to begin with. Crawford was right. They never had any plans of fighting him in 2022 because they wanted him to step in there for nothing. So when a Craw look, when they say Crawford agreed to everything in 22. He was absolutely correct when they came back with that final revision talking about, oh, no, we want to fight in 2023. You agree with that? No. I want to fight, man. I ain't want to be out the ring a full fucking year and a half and be inactive. So that's why he took the David Avenesian fight. He walked away and took the Avenesian fight in Omaha. You know what I'm saying? So I, I'm just a little bit... It's a little bit disturbed that I haven't heard any backlash, any ridicule about Spence agreeing 50-50 so easily as long as he's been in the sport. We're talking about an Olympian who's did all the heavy lifting at, at 147 pounds. So, so I should hear the Errol Sexual's like, if Crawford can activate his WBO to fight at 154, shit. Shit, Al Hamer, the PBC, that's who run boxing. Uh, huh. Ain't that what they were saying? Uh, see, y'all, y'all underestimated. Once again, once again, Crawford should have signed this. Crawford should have signed that. He should have signed that fight. Now look what they did again. They, they blacklisted him. They freezing him out. Hmm. So they freezing him out by telling EJ to go over there and except 50 50 with a named opponent that they didn't believe that was going to win the fight first of all it's the reason why team fundor is not showing errol spence any love in this win it's a reason probably because they was betting against fundor to lose that's probably why they're not showing them no love you know what i'm saying that's probably why they're not showing them no love y'all real talk Serious, that's probably why they're not showing them no love. Because they was busy up there trying to go for Zoo and talk that Zoo talk. And Zoo, and zoo lost. And, and they wanted to jump in the ring like a goofball and challenge Fundora. Mm -mm -mm -mm. That's, not, that's not cool. That's not cool, I'm just saying. 
He said, who is worse, Errol Sexton or Boots um, Bandits? I don't really call Boots as having bandits. Um, if anything, you're going to blend those two fan bases together. All you have to do is keep saying aerosexuals because both of them are basically the same fan base. For real. They saw that EJ was on his way out. They felt some type of way um, about the beating that he received last year. So all of them, they relocated. They relocated. They went over there and tried to put their hand in Boots' back and start trying to stroke his ego and say, Yes, Jerron, we're here for you. we always been here, okay? I know we've been saying EJ name a lot, but we always been here, Jerron. We love you. We're here. Show us some love. Because EJ never showed us a motherfucking thing. Show us some love. We support you. Philly, stand up. Tank fans getting very bad, too. No, nah, no. Nah. Tank fans, you don't even know who they are, man. See, that's the, that's the crazy part about how Tank move. Tank, Tank, Tank moves so methodically, man. Behind the scenes, under the scenes, under the man. That, that man is 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 not fighting. Nobody's even talking about Tank not fighting like that. But Tank is still a, a when his name popped back up on um when they start doing the presser for Frank Martin, people are gonna be tuned the fuck in. That's the wild part, and, and and how dynamic that is with Tank, man. He don't have to be out here in the conversation with beef. Dude, dude is a a. a I don't know, man. His 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 aura is different, for real. You know, you know. Every now and then, you might hear him go on Twitter and, and say a, a two or three liner. But man, Tank, man, he, he's smooth with his shit, man. I don't know who his fan base is. I know, because Tank ain't on shit like that. But people support him. You know what I'm saying? People support the fuck out of Tank, man. Miguel, what's good? Monty King saying Dungo won his belts in Russia. You know, and you know, and Dungo was undefeated too when he fought Crawford, but they say he won shit to begin with. Come on, man. I can't say that about him, Dungo, man. Dungo's cool people he can fight, man. Feel like Spence don't want that lube and smoke either. He's gonna have to fight somebody. He's gonna have to fight somebody. I like to see that fight. Erickson Lubin and uh Errol Spence, I like to see that fight. You know what I'm saying? But, you know, I, 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 you know, I just look at it like, mm, I don't know who's going to make that fight, man. Does Lubin, does Lubin want the fight right now? I don't know. I don't know, man. Does he want the fight right now? Who knows? Let me check something out right quick. Yeah, he last fought September of last year. Jesus Ramos. Yeah. Yeah, I like to see that fight. So he hasn't been out the ring that long. He hasn't been out the ring that long, man. Spence wasn't even at the table at the first negotiation according to Bud. Correct. Correct. He wasn't even at the table because their their Lord, their king, their savior, their God was passing messages. You know what I'm saying? He was passing messages. He wasn't even at the table. That's I remember when everybody was saying, like, how does Bud think he's going to get anything done up there against Al Heyman going to the table? He's stupid. You know what I'm saying? He should just sign with the PBC and take what they give him. But yet he didn't take what they give him. He ended up getting what he wanted and more. You know what I'm saying? People's up here complaining. How can he get the corn flip, though? Who do that? Who where they do the corn flip at? Huh? That ain't right, man. That's ghetto right there, man. The coin flip and all that. That right there. I don't know where that come from right there. The coin flip. And then who he think he is walking out second, man. Keeping Spence waiting and shit, man. Who doing that right there, man. He don't be doing what he's supposed to as a champion, man. That motherfucker was mad as shit. A coin flip to determine who walks out first. Second. He walks out with Eminem second and get the titles. Oh, my God. Al Lamo must have some strange perks anytime he had Fondora coach. Damn, they're saying it's Spence first Fondora. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
No, it's it's more. You you you're talking about you talking about Tim Zhu though. Like Tim Zhu's camp was more so Spence, 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 Spence. Um, Fondora's camp. I'm wondering were they being genuine, genuine on who they was planning on fighting next. You know what I'm saying? Were they did they have any plans on fighting um, Spence next? Next, you know, Fondori came out and said he wanted to fight Crawford. That's quite different than what his manager was talking about or whoever he is, you know. So I know right now um, Spence is, is at home. You know what I'm saying? No telling where he at. If he's out there on the ranch, somebody better go check on him. Somebody better go check on him. He said they boot sexual. <laughs> now I can't give them that title of being a boot sexual yet because boots haven't really had boots haven't really been on the scene long enough for them to start acting like they're boot sexuals. They haven't been on the scene yet. Boots haven't been on the scene long enough. We, we're still waiting for him to get back in the ring, man. Because we want to we want to know what the media is talking about with him. I, I don't see his fans being as diehard of clowns yet. He might have a legitimate fan base, a cool fan base. But unfortunately for him, his shit is contaminated because the aerosexuals are fleeing. The aerosexuals flee and they and they jumped the border. They went over there and jumped the Philly border and came over there and tried to hide out in that gym where Boots was at. So so we don't know. We don't know. MKB said Bud went to um Al with his own proposition that was willing to listen. To Al and what's the potential to their fight? Um, to get made, Al turned into a dollar bill. Proposition and what was willing to listen to Al and what was the potential for the fight? Their fight to get made. Are you talking about their fight for Fandora? Shout out to Juice Lee in the building, man. What's good with it? I see you, man. Now, uh, WCS, the PBC always wanted Fondora to win over Tim. Tim is with no limit. And him being a legacy fighter and a backing from Australia, had he won, he could have fought Crawford in Australia for big dollars. Okay, I've heard I heard that, that Juice. I've heard that. But, okay, if that is indeed the case, why is the traffic? What's, what's going on with the traffic, man? Why, when I look at look at the intersection, uh, Errol been sitting over there at a red light for days. You know what I'm saying? Like, if 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 they wanted Fundora to win, why isn't the play in full effect? Why aren't they talking about Fundora Spence? Why is Samson up here talking about? Oh, we will honor the contract, the verbal contract agreement that we had by fighting Zoo in November. Am I missing something? Like, wouldn't PBC have some type of control over there? Wouldn't, wouldn't they be able to finesse the situation prior to if he's in charge of everything? Because they're talking about freaking zoo, zoo, zoo. Now, granted, Juice, they can come back a little bit later and switch it up. You know how boxing is now. It's supposed to be a one-on-one -on -one sport. They might take off the gloves and get some tennis racks and we start seeing a tennis match. 15 love, 15 love. Zoo's up to serve. 15, 30 love. 30 love, that shot was good, y'all. 30 love. They might start playing tennis with this shit. They might start playing tennis with the... Oh, all of a sudden, you know, Errol Spins come back out in the conversation that him and Zoo is going to fight. But still, still, like I mentioned earlier, Juice, um, Pandora don't supposed to come back in November. That means Spence would have would have been out the ring a year and a half, man. And you know how they love putting Crawford on the clock. I'm gonna see what they're gonna put Errol Spence on the clock, goddammit. And what they gonna do? Errol Spence out the ring again. Er, er, look, EJ out the ring again. 
They gonna find some way to blame Crawford, y'all. Look, if EJ gonna fight from door, he's still in a, in a, in a, in, a, in a, you know SOL because he's gonna be out the ring for a long ass time waiting on front door to come back at the end of the year. You know, the longer Spence stay out the ring, the less crab legs is on the menu because he's up there consuming them. So we need to get him back in the ring, man. And, and the fighter that's always in the gym, Terrence Bud Crawford, maybe PBC can can goddamn give give Crawford the numbers that he's looking for. Since they send the Spence over there to say, yes, yes, see, see, we'll agree, we'll agree 50%. If they're going to send Spence over there to agree so easily, why can't they come over here and try to make a deal with Crawford? Since we're giving, we, we in the, we in the state of giving. We're in the holiday spirit early. Tim will have 70-30 Spence in Australia. Spence as a unified champion and Spence to recover the massive smoke inhalation. <laughs> oh, shit, man. Dude. That's, 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 that's very, very confusing. That somehow, some way, based off one loss, because based off the arrow session, he just he just had one loss and it was weight drag. So you're telling me in Australia, it's gonna be him 70-30, and and they they're not gonna include any type of FICO score from 147, all the heavy lifting that he participated in, all the extra credit that he participated in, him getting off the canvas and, uh, as much as he did. And, and, and fighting himself into a ninth round stoppage, so he don't get anything for that? That doesn't boost him up to, to, to more than 30%, bro? You're trying to tell me, that Juice, that when the negotiations was going on with Crawford, and, and when 70-30 came up, they was like, hell no. That's still even too much for Crawford. Him getting 30 percent, that's even too much. And you're trying to tell me based off one loss from a guy who had everybody ranting and raving that he deserves 70, 80, 20. 70, 30, 80, 20. The force that on Crawford. He gets one loss and he potentially go over there to Australia and he's gonna take a measly 30%. Off one loss, and he was a unified champion at 147 pounds. You're trying to tell me that? That's crazy. I'm I'm I'm, I'm calling racism, dog. Uh, there's something racist about this, man. Uh uh. You they talking about black people can't be racist? Hell to the no. Something is motherfucking racist about this situation right here, y'all. Seriously, something is not right about this i heard all the arguing bickering complaining in 22 about what crawford didn't rate and you're trying to tell me crawford did that shit when he was undefeated and he still couldn't get no justice but yet spence take a l from crawford who didn't fight nobody and now all of a sudden the guy who did all the heavy lifting got to go to australia and take 30 and you, is that what you're trying to tell me juice you you, you can't be serious bro not that guy. Not the popular guy that has Jerry Jones behind him. No way in hell, bro. No way. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. No way. Can't believe that. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. No way. Mm -mm. I don't like that shit right there. Mm -mm. Nah, I don't like that. Spence value dropped significantly. His own state turned on him. Better get them um, comp tickets ready. Man, what are y'all talking about, man? Let's take a breather right quick. Let's let's reset. Let's reset. All right. Let's take a breather. It's 2024. It's April 2nd. I had to look down at the calendar because I thought y'all niggas was damn pulling the fast one on me. I thought this was still April 1st. Okay. The whole time I thought this still April 1st. Y'all was pulling some damn. Y'all was trying to pull the wool over nigga eyes now. But, let, me see. let me put this in perspective now. So what you telling me is. First of all, this is not April 1st. And you're trying to tell me everything that I was a part of in 22 with all this freaking scholars, all these scholars talking this boxing talk as if they was actually in the business. But it's just shit that stuck with me on how they were saying that Crawford, who has more accolades than Fondora, 
more accolades than Zhu. But somehow he could not work this out at the negotiation table. They couldn't recognize what he's been able to accomplish. The man had to capitulate and say, I'll take, yeah, yeah, okay, 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 I agree, I agree, I agree, I agree. He had to agree to everything, which was very minimal pay. But all of a sudden, I've never heard Tim Zoo them going through the same shit. I haven't heard Fondora going through the same stuff. I haven't heard them going through... Oh, I agree, man. I agree. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I agree to that. Yeah, yeah, I agree. I agree to everything. So you wouldn't have fight, um, fight for net pay that Fundora. Yeah, yeah. Um, um, Samson, uh, what we heard is that um, Fundora is willing to fight for net pay. It'll never happen. It'll never happen. Who said that? Crawford? Because they try to do them that way. No, it's just we just heard the hearsay. Oh, it'll never happen. Fondora never fight for net pay. Hmm. That's interesting. That's all I'm saying. It's interesting. Because I, I just heard all, you know, I've just seen all these freaking mazes that was going on and all these people that was considering themselves to be um, business role players. And they was freaking co-signing that Crawford didn't deserve this percentage and that percentage. But yet we're hearing that Spence has agreed so easily to 50-50 when him and the Crawford negotiations was just dragging the fuck out. This is disappointing. I'm not going to lie. This is mother effing disappointing. I don't like it, bro. I don't like how I'm hearing all these damn numbers being agreed upon just to, just to get yourself on deck. When you sat up here for months, when a fight that was materializing for five years, a nickel, right? And, and, you, and you took it through the ringer. But now you get knocked out and you come back on the scene desperately, you know, selling yourself out. You sold yourself out, agreeing to 50-50 with Fundora, who hasn't did nothing. He won a single fight. Crawford won many. But yet Fundora automatically gets your cosign. Man, get the fuck out of here. Yeah, Samson was talking about Sebastian versus Spence doing ninety thousand, and he believes that Samson. Hey, he believes that the people want to see the rematch juice. He believes Sebastian and Zoo can do ninety thousand. He believes either way. He's like people. You didn't hear him say the people want to see the rematch. The people wants to see the rematch. Yes, he said that they can go to the stadium and, and, and do 90000 right? So, so, and that's when Danny came up and say, well, you know that, that Errol Spence has only averaged 30 plus thousand. You know that, right? When you're talking about, uh, you know, going over there, they can do 90000 they can sell it out. But Samson was just throwing that shit up there just for sprinkles. Because he believes Zoo... And Fondora can do that too. Hey, he say the people want to see the rematch. That's what he said. The people want to see the rematch now. I actually like what they're trying to do to Crawford. We are witnessing a boogeyman in real time. He's got an entire promotional outfit shook. This is Tyson level fear. I agree, man. Good point. Solid. Solid. I, I just look at the intersection and, and, and Spence is still at the red light, dog. The good thing is when, it, when he had the red light, he can't have an accident because we don't need him to have an accident right now. But the wild part about it that I just can't really um, get over, right, is the lack of attention that, that they just allowed Samson to say that shit about Arrow is Greek the 55th. And I don't hear all these, these Arrow sexual channels talking about how he so easily agreed to a guy who really haven't did anything special except beat Tim Zoo. How can you negotiate so much when they was just bigging you up in 22 and even 23? They was bigging Spence up, pound for pound list, all that. And then all of a sudden, the, the grand pooper gives orders to go up there in the ring and say, hey, he want him next and all that bullshit. 
and to just agree to that amount that's that's crazy that's crazy but gonna stop canelo in the building what's good but versus spencer 154 for the wbc let's get it um how though how are they gonna fight for the wbc and jamel charlo is in recess at 154 for the wbc so they definitely not gonna get that shot i mean i understand jamel supposedly had a seizure or something you know what i'm saying so once again jamel is not going to be back anytime soon but he is the champion in recess and then you understand that fundora now has the wbc he's not going to be back so you want crawford to fight for interim huh but gonna canelo you want crawford to fight for an interim title is that what you're trying to get across to me? You want him to fight for an interim title? Are you saying that? No, we can't do that because he activated the WBO. Why not go for the WBO route, man? Why not go for the WBO route? Don't sell him for no interim title. Look what happened to Sebastian Fundora hanging out. Hanging out with that interim. Hanging out, hanging out. No, that's 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 not <clears throat> that's not staying on track, bro. They would never mention 50-50. It's not part of the um, paid program. That he says they on a uh, strict script. Yes, sir. But, you know, that's why they have to be. That's why I have to grab the megaphone and, and, and give this announcement. And say, hey, it will be good if you all kept the same energy you had in 22. <clears throat> y'all was busy talking about numbers. The only reason y'all didn't talk about numbers in 23 because you didn't hear, you know, all the sources. You couldn't get no information. They kept it hush-hush exclusively they kept it confidential y'all yeah, was in 22 just rambling on about numbers and who didn't rate this and that but guess what he just said that spence already agreed to 50 50. why aren't y'all up here saying that spence rates more than that he should he should um have a hard negotiation why because y'all just want y'all don't care no more Y'all just want to let that go? Y'all don't care? I get it. It's all good, man. It's all good. But, man, I got to bounce up out of here. Appreciate y'all, man. And once again, if y'all chose to support the channel, choose to support, my cash app has been floating down. You know, do what you like. If you choose to like, hit the like button. But, you know, one thing that's, that, that'll be cool is next time you get this notification, drop back in and support the channel. Y'all already know WCS, World Combat Sports. Shout out to the hottest chat in the MFN game. A side official. No negotiation needed, period. I'm 